Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Victoria and today we are going to be doing the mid-year book freakout tag. This is a very popular tag on booktube. I have done it every year that I've had a channel and a, I love seeing everyone's answers for this. I usually do it in like last week of June or like first week of July but I'm doing it a little early this time because I'm gonna have videos for like full videos for a couple of the questions so I figured that I would do this first and then have those videos later um but I um I'm gonna just go through the questions and give you my answers and share with you a little bit of the things about the best books that I've read this year, the worst books that I've read this year, my favorite things that I've read this year, that kind of thing, and what I still need to read. So without further ado, I'm going to get into the questions because there are quite a few of them. I think there are like 13 of them. So the first question is, what is the best book you've read so far this year? So for this one, I am going to have a full video for this talking about like my absolute like favorites that I've read this year. But for this video, I'm just going to list off a couple of them. In my full video, I will get into like what they're about and why I loved them and all that kind of thing. So, um, so my favorite books of the year so far have absolutely been Reckless by Elsie Silver, um, Hail Mary by Candy Steiner, um Brutal Vows by JT Geisinger and I think that's good for now those are three that I absolutely loved that are probably going to be on my top books top favorite books of the year so love them the second question is the best sequel you've read so far this year I have not read a whole ton of like just of sequels um as in like the second one in the series that I've read last year but one that I read a ton of the series last year that I read the most recent book this year is Crimson River by Devney Perry. This is the fifth book in the Eden series so it's like sort of a sequel. It's like the continuation of a series um, but I absolutely love this book. It just came out in June and I gave it five stars. It's romantic suspense. It's so freaking good and I absolutely loved this one. The third question is a new release you haven't yet read yet but want to. There are a lot that I have that I want, haven't read yet um, but a couple of them are The uh, Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. This has like blown up and become so popular. I bought a copy of it which I don't have right now because my mom is actually reading it um, but I haven't read it yet and I'm so excited about it. I'm hoping that I can get to it in July. Um, another new release that I haven't gotten to yet is Paladin by Onley James. This is her first book in her Jericho's Boys series. It's a spin-off series of the Necessary Evil series, which I absolutely loved. So I definitely have to read that one. Another one is Grimm and Barrett by Juliet Cross. It's the last book in the Stay a Spell series. I absolutely love the Stay a Spell series and I have not gotten a chance to read that last book yet. So I, I'm sure there are more, but those are like three off the top of my head and that I definitely still need to read that have come out so far this year. The fourth question is uh, most anticipated release for the second half of the year. There are a lot of them um, and I don't know, I'm sure I don't know some of them because <laughs> I, I read indie romance only and so a lot of indie authors don't release like they don't let you know about the books coming out until like a couple of months before it comes out but the ones that I definitely know about are um, I think it's called On the Shore Short by Laura Pavlov which is the third book in the Cottonwood Cove series. I actually think it comes out in July and I'm super excited about that. I become obsessed with her Cottonwood Cove series and just Laura Pavlov in general this year and I'm so excited for the third one of that. Um, another one that I know that is supposed to be coming out this year but I don't know if we have like a cover or release date or anything about it um uh, but that's Score by Kennedy Ryan which is the second book in the series that has Real in it. I absolutely love Real. It's my favorite Kennedy Ryan book and I am dying for the second book in the series so I'm pretty sure that's supposed to come out this year. Um, another one is Out on a Limb by Hannah Bottom Young. This is a book that my friend Avery from Ava's Romance Books says that I absolutely have to read. She said it's her favorite book of the year and that it has amazing chronic illness representation and you know I'm gonna have to read that. Um, another one is Glimmers of You by Katherine Cowles or in just the entire rest of her 
I can't remember what that series is called, but that whole series I think is going to come out this year. So uh, Sable Peak by Devney Perry is another one. Uh, like I said, there are so many that I want to read that have uh, come out in, for the rest of the year and I'm just, I cannot wait. I'm so excited. Ooh, number five is the biggest disappointment. So for this question, I am not going off of like worst book, it's disappointment. So it's books that I had like high expectations for that did not live up to those expectations. And one of those is Jasper Vale by Daphne Perry, which is book four in the Eden series. I gave this book three stars. Um, I just, it didn't live up to my expectations. I have loved the entire rest of the series and this one just kind of fell flat for me. I just didn't believe the romance that much. Um, another one is Hacker in Love by Lauren Rowe, which is another one that I gave three, I think I gave that one three and a half stars. Um, but I was so excited about a new Lauren Rowe book and I was hoping it would be a five star and it just, I did not love it. I was kind of bored during it and it just didn't live up to the expectations that I had for it um, or to previous Lauren Rowe books that I've read. So it just kind of fell flat. Um, and then the last one that I'm going to say is Resting Witch Face by Juliet Cross. So that one is another one that I gave three stars. It is one of the most anticipated ones in the series that I was waiting for. And I read it and I did not love it. It was bored and I just, there were parts of it that I just aggressively did not like. It just completely didn't work for me. Um, so I was really disappointed about that one. Number six is the biggest surprise you've had this year and for this one I'm gonna go with the Pack Darling duet by Lola Rock. I had read Omegaverse romances before. I mean like uh, Lola and the Millionaires is one of my favorite books but I was absolutely shocked by how much I loved the Pack Darling duet by Lola Rock. I gave the first one in the series 4.5 stars and the second one 5 stars. I was absolutely in love with them. They are so freaking good and I usually don't like bully romances and the first book in the series is pretty much um very much a bully romance and I loved it. I loved this book. I loved this this duet. I thought it was so freaking good and I was shocked by how much I loved the a um Omegaverse romance. Number seven is favorite new author. I actually just did a video on this so I'll link that down below and talked about like extensively about my new favorite authors that I've read this year. Um but I have to again mention Elsie Silver she really does live up to the hype. Reckless is probably my favorite book of the year so far. I absolutely love it. Um, and Heartless also was so freaking good. And I also, again, have to say Laura Pavlov. I just talked about her in the couple previous questions. Um, but I absolutely loved her Cottonwood Coast series. I read her Honey Mountain series. They're so freaking good and fun and just enjoyable um and just such good small town and then again i want to talk about kelly fox kelly fox is an mm author who i read this year if you love necessary evils by only james you should read kelly fox's uh, mobsters and billionaires series it's so good and so fun and you'll just have a great time the next question is newest fictional crush so for this one i'm gonna go with theo from reckless can you tell i loved reckless um i just loved theo so much he was so sweet to winter so good with his daughter it was just oh, absolutely amazing but i also want to say mateo from good as gold by serena bowen i enjoyed this book by serena bowen it was my favorite of hers uh, but the uh but mateo made this book he absolutely was my favorite thing about this book he was just so so good and so he just was exactly what I wanted in a hero for that book and it was so freaky he's so good number nine is newest favorite character again I'm gonna talk about reckless because I'm gonna have to say winter um from reckless by Elsie Silver but I'm also gonna say Ziggy from if only you by Chloe Lise I absolutely loved Ziggy she was uh a she's a new She's a Bergman sister and I really, really loved her and related to her a lot. Um, she really, in that book, gets frustrated by not being thought of as an adult and I really related to that and really loved her whole determination to be herself and her unapologeticness of who she was and working with the 
chronic illnesses and disabilities and just life things that life had handed her and just like working through it so well and being so comfortable in herself I just absolutely loved her number 10 is a book that made you cry I do not cry in books very often there are only a few books in my entire life that have made me cry um and I don't haven't had any this year that have done that the most recent book to make me cry was real from last year that I read in like November or October of last year so I haven't had any this year that have made me cry but if you have a recommendation for a book that'll make me cry let me know Number 11 is a book that made you happy and for this one I have to go with The Worst Wedding Date by Pippa Grant. Um, I always read Pippa Grant books when I am feeling sick or sad um, and they always just make me so smiley and this one was absolutely no exception. I had such a fun time reading this book. I read it like all in one sitting. It was late at night and I was just laying in my bed and like full giggling. It was just so fun. It's a romance where a heroine her best friend is getting married and she is asked to babysit her best friend's brother because he is kind of a troublemaker and he doesn't get along with the groom but he's paying for the wedding and he's just an absolute sweetheart and I loved the way that this romance went I love the way that the plot went I was not expecting some of the things that like just popped up Pippa Grant's books are so freaking random and like out of this world kind of situations where they're like you have to kind of suspend your disbelief about what's happening but it was so funny and it just made me so happy and smiley there are kittens in this book the hero like rescues kittens that he finds on the street um and he like keeps them in his hotel room and it's so so cute then number 12 is the prettiest book that you got this year I haven't really bought that many books this year and the ones that I have bought are packed away in my suitcase for Book Bonanza. I'm leaving in a couple of days for Book Bonanza so I packed all my books already um but I haven't really got I don't I haven't really gotten any special editions or anything um that I can think of. I don't think I have one for this question. The last question is what books do you still need to read by the end of the year? I have so freaking many because I still have only read like two books on my books to 22 or 23 books to read in 2023 that video that I made at the beginning of the year. I think I've only read two books off that list so all the rest of those books um but some that I absolutely have to get to that are not on that list or might be on some of one of them might be on this list I don't know. Um, one of them is Binding 13 by Chloe Walsh. This book became super popular this year. The first person that I heard talk about this was Nikki in Bookland. She absolutely loved this. And this is a rugby romance and I think it takes place in Ireland. And I love sports romance and I love Ireland. So I think that I'll really like it. It's really long but it seems really good and so many people have absolutely loved it. So I really want to read it. Um, the next one is Heist by Tate James. This book came out at the end of last year and I didn't get to it because the audiobook hadn't come out but the audiobook came out earlier this year and I definitely want to read this series if I can read the whole series but I think only the first two books are out on audio so I at least want to read the first two books. I absolutely love Tate James. She's one of my favorite authors. She writes Why Choose Romances and they're so fun and good and spicy and I really want to read this series. It just sounds really interesting. And then the last one that I'm going to mention that I definitely have to get to before the end of the year because I said that I was going to read it last year and I didn't read it and that is Still by Kennedy Ryan. I read Flow and Grip I think it was last year. It might have even been multiple years ago because I think it was in a different house. Um, it was a long time ago. <laughs> might have been 2021. I don't know. But I read those too and I haven't read Still yet. I've just been putting it off. I don't know why but that one I need to read and I'm determined to read it by the end of this year so I am gonna do it um but that's the last question that's it for for this tag um I am going to tag whoever wants to do this video I don't really have a specific person to tag um so if you want to do this video consider yourself tagged um but that's gonna get for this video so let me know down in the comments below how you felt about my answers to these questions let me know some of your answers um but that is gonna be it so i hope that you have the absolute best day bye